Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, February 12th, 2021. Into the weeds here, how the fair tax rate is calculated. Now, most of us who are actively promoting the fair tax spend a lot of our time answering questions about how the fair tax will be applied to various parts of the economy and how it will affect people's lives. When asked about how the 23% rate came about, we explained that that's what the fair tax's designers determined would be needed in order to ensure that the fair tax would generate the same amount of revenue as the taxes it will be replacing. However, the question often arises, well, what happens after the first year? How is the rate calculated then? Dr. Karen Walby, an economic advisor to Americans for Fair Taxation since 2004, has provided us with an answer to that question, and here is her answer. As you know, the tax rate for the calendar year when the fair tax is enacted is set to 23% of the gross payments price plus tax for the use or consumption in the United States of taxable property, goods, or services. The fair tax is revenue neutral. Therefore, fair tax revenues are allocated among the various trust funds to ensure that the same proportionate amount of revenue flows into each trust fund as it would have under current law. Now, these funds are the General Revenue Fund, the Old Age and Survivors Insurance Trust Fund, i.e. Social Security, the Disability Insurance Trust Fund, the Hospital Insurance Trust Fund, that's Medicare, and the Federal Supplementary Medicaid Insurance Trust Fund. For all the subsequent years, the rate of tax is equal to the combined federal tax rate percentage of the gross payment of the taxable property, goods, or services. The combined federal tax rate percentage is the sum of, one, the general revenue rate, two, the old age survivors and disability insurance, social security rate, and the hospital insurance, Medicare rate. Now let's look at these individually. First, the general revenue fund. Total collected fair tax revenues are allocated to the general revenue fund in the same proportion as the general revenue rate bears to the combined federal tax rate percentage. The general revenue rate is set at 14.91%. For the Social Security Trust Fund, this rate is set annually on an actuarially sound basis to provide the same amount of revenue as the current payroll tax would have raised if it were still in effect. The Social Security rate equals revenues that would have been generated by the Social Security payroll tax divided by the fair tax base. Same for the Medicare Trust Fund. This rate is set annually on an actuarially sound basis to provide the same amount of revenue as the current payroll tax would have raised if it were still in effect. And the Medicare rate equals revenues that would have been raised by the Medicare payroll tax divided by the fair tax base. For the first year, the allocation of total revenue from the fair tax is specified in H.R. 25 as follows. 64.83% of fair tax revenues will go to the general revenue fund, that tax rate at 14.91%. The Social Security Trust Fund gets 27.43% of fair tax revenue at a tax rate of 6.31%. And the Medicare Trust Fund will get 7.74% of fair tax revenue with a tax rate of 1.78. And that all adds up to 100% of revenue at a tax rate of 23%. Now, the bottom line is that the fair tax rate will be set in the annual U.S. budget, which has to be passed by both the House and Senate and signed by the President. The allocation of the total fair tax rate to the general revenue, Social Security, and Medicare funds will also have to be specified therein and likewise approved. If the fair tax is enacted before Social Security and Medicare reform, the above provisions will undoubtedly have to be revised to define how the revenues that go into each of these trust funds is determined. Then the rates will be calculated and added to the general fund rate in order to get the total fair tax rate. As mentioned above, the revenues and rates will have to be approved in the budgeting process, voted on by Congress, and signed by the President. Now, As with any other tax legislation, any part of the fair tax legislation can be revised by any future Congress, and tax legislation must originate in the House of Representatives. In conclusion, 
Ella Kazan was a Greek-American film and theater director whose career started in 1934 and continued until 1976. He directed many classic films, and he said, Whatever hysteria exists is inflamed by mystery, suspicion, and secrecy. Hard and exact facts will cool it. Now, Karen has provided us the hard and exact facts that reveal that there is no mystery about the fair tax rate. So again, if you have friends who don't know about the fair tax, send them to fairtax.org, have them watch the whiteboards under how it works, and if they agree, ask them to please join us. Then, contact your members of Congress and the President and demand that Congress pass the fair tax, the only truly fair tax. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 